the year of 1997, some people would say that it's the beginning of a new Hong Kong. But to me, I think it's more like the beginning of an end. Twenty-five years since the British handover of Hong Kong to China. Those born in 1997 have witnessed rapid social and political change. We spoke to three young Hong Kongers about the city's evolution. I think a lot of young adults like myself, we all feeling the same thing because those opportunities that were offered to the previous generation are no longer available to us. Is it harder to find a job in the circumstances that we're in now? Yeah, obviously, but there's also a lot of external factors affecting it too. I think 1997 was the beginning of an end that we'll see how Hong Kong would descend into the chaos or the city that we're seeing right now. Uh, a city that is without freedom, without democracy, and also without the trust of the people. From SARS in 2003 through the 2008 Beijing Olympics, the 2014 Umbrella Movement, and the 2019 pro-democracy protests, the Hong Kong of 2022 is now a very different environment. I was always very frustrated by when they referred to us as this bright future of Hong Kong or the next generation. But really, how much has the government done for us? You can see that an overwhelming majority of Hong Kongers, we really uh, want democracy. But what we got was just deaf years from the government and the government telling you um, literally that you're not a stakeholder of the society. I would say that one of the biggest changes I've seen is that, you know, Hong Kong is, as a whole is getting more and more closed off. Slowly, like gradually, gradually, you know, People are censoring themselves from, you know, openly talking about topics that for most of the people in the world seems normal. Hong Kong now marks the halfway point in its 50-year transition to Chinese rule. With China tightening its grip on the territory, does this generation still see its future here? Of course, I would consider going back to Hong Kong, and I think that is the driving force uh, for me every single day, every single morning I wake up, and then I realize I'm not at home and I cannot go home. I cannot go home to see the people I love. And then I would think, oh, then I need to do something. I better do something to make sure that I can get home one day. If Hong Kong remains the same way it is currently, where opportunities are favorable to me, yeah, I don't see why not. I don't see why I would leave. But at the same time, when that changes and when I don't have reason to stay in Hong Kong, I will definitely leave. So in a 10 year to 25 years, that's really hard to say. If you say, you know, five to 10 years, possibly.